direct communication is the language of leadership. In the book, Listen Up by LeMay and Schlomberger, the authors talk about three types of listening. First type is hearing, and this is just listening to the words that are spoken and receiving the words that are spoken for their literal meaning. Second one is analyzing. That's looking for a, a deeper meaning, critical thinking a little bit, trying to understand what the speaker is saying. And finally, empathizing. That's looking at the underlying feeling, the nonverbal cues, and the meaning behind what the speaker is saying. When looking at listening, or effective listening, we need to look at active listening, which is very important. It's a very important to listen to the speaker until the speaker has completed what they're saying. Make sure you keep focus on the speaker. Don't use any prejudice or opinion when listening to somebody. Watch their tone and their body language to understand the feelings and the meanings behind what they're saying. Um, and don't let any previous knowledge interfere with what the speaker is saying. Um, so that you can clearly understand the, the message. In the Foundations of Organizational Leadership course, our book discussed learning styles and cognitive profiles. This explains how people learn, and there's four styles to the way people learn and communicate. The first one is the sensor thinker. These are people that are analytical, they're methodical, uh, they're organized, they're able to retain large amounts of information. Memorization is never a problem. They like to work alone with no distractions and be very organized. Usually they do well in math and science and end up in positions in business or liberal studies. The second group are sensor feelers. These are concrete verbal learners. They work better with a partner. Uh, they like to break the task from large into smaller pieces and relate personally to this experience. They do relate well with people, so they end up in nurturing positions like nursing or teaching. The third is intuitive thinkers. These have a strong need to understand. They're very logical. Uh, they want to see the overall picture. They like to work alone first and then have that understanding in a group as well. And they usually end up in things like engineering or science or design. Finally, we have intuitive feelers. These are more abstract, uh, visual learners, most creative. Usually they're frustrated by school or routine memorization or anything like that. They do struggle to have instructors understand their learning style, so they have problems in school. And generally they end up as inventors or artists or even in design as well. So understanding how people listen is a great building block for building your communication skills. This helps in the workplace with training employees and moving forward in your career. Next, so in the book, How to Tell Anyone Anything by R.F. Gallagher, he addressed three styles for communication. The first one is aggressive. These are people who are very closed-minded. They don't listen well. They interrupt people, monopolize the conversation. They're very patronizing and they don't admit to being wrong. So they don't make great leaders because they're always trying to control people, which will bring resistance and lying. Second type is passive. These are people who are more hesitant, self-conscious. They let others make the decisions. They sit on the fence on issues. Uh, they depend on relationships. They become powerless and often have low self-esteem. So they don't ever progress up the corporate ladder or have a lot of job stability. Finally, there's assertive. These are your effective listeners, people that express themselves clearly. They don't judge others. They take people's feelings into account. They're very proactive and fair, consistent in what they do. They're great candidates for leaders because they're attentive. They're relaxed, they're confident, and they motivate others by being enthusiastic. And they build greater relationships in the workplace. In the book, Managing in the Age of Change, Ritvo, Litwin, and Butler discuss barriers to communication. The first three are more interpersonal in your everyday life. Uh, physical barriers are actually things like doors or windows or space between people. Perceptual is how people perceive things, um, letting their own perception affect the meaning of the message. Then there's emotional. 
These are people, this is when people bring emotions into it and don't get the clear meaning behind it because they're scared of what people will think about them. The next four are more effective, affected in the business world. Cultural barriers, people who come from certain cultures have different belief systems, therefore sometimes communication gets misconstrued. Um, language is a ma major barrier. There's 6,000 languages, so English being the international language of business helps with that, but a lot of communication problems occur due to jargon and things like that. Uh, gender is also a big thing because women communicate differently than men. Women are more logical and emotional, where men are logical but compartmentalize their ideas and feelings. And finally, interpersonal. These are the ones that people probably struggle with the most. And these are gonna be things like um, people not reaching out to others uh, because they're scared of people hearing what they have to say or, or not hearing them correctly. So being an effective listener and communicator and understanding how people learn is very important. Uh, all of these qualities will help you to become a better leader. Um, there's, yeah, in the book, Change the Culture, Change the Game by R. Connors and T. Smith, they discussed qualities that a leader should possess. The first one is vision. They know where to go and how to get to their success. Uh, they're able to lead others along the path. They do this with confidence. Um, they're, they understand that they know where they're going and they understand how to get there and they are confident about that and people follow them because of that. And with that, they bring enthusiasm to lead people to the end. They're also self-aware. They know their differences they're able to understand where their weaknesses are and their strengths, and they're willing to learn new ideas. And they always lead with integrity. Um, they're ethical in everything that they do, um, and courageous to face new challenges and work towards success with their team. And finally, innovation. Leaders think outside the box. They're able to work well under change, um, adjust to change, and motivate others during change. And Finally, looking at John Maxwell's five levels, uh, levels of leadership, these discuss the different types of leaders and a progression into a stronger leadership. The first one is position, and this is basically just the title, the influence that somebody has because of their title. These are people who are usually bosses, but seldom have leadership qualities. They don't really have to have any effort or ability. They're often just placed there because they know somebody. Secondly, we have permission. These are people who influence others to follow because they want to follow. They develop trust among their followers and they create positive environments to build relationships and get along with everyone. They take time to get to another team and they focus on the value that brings. Third level is production. They begin to take more action to achieve goals and improve performance among their team and begin to get followers for their contribution to the business and build stronger relationships which increases performance. Fourth one is people development, which is where they actually begin to develop others. Um, they empower others and develop others into leaders, which gives a stronger teamwork and uh, increased performance and loyalty. Final, finally, we have pinnacle. Seldom people ever get to this level. These are people who are true leaders and they develop other leaders and followers into level four leaders. So these are the most important people for the company. So it's important, if you wanna become a leader, you have to reach higher, you need to learn how to listen, you need to understand how people listen, you need to understand people's learning styles and how people communicate to help you be an effective leader.